So the Doug Ford 2022 election sequel turned out to be even more successful than the 2018 original. His progressive conservative party landed another majority with the win called in less than half an hour. And the night ending with the resignation of his two rivals, NDP leader Andrea Horvath after four shots resigns and so does liberal leader Stephen Del Duca after one shot. Now the NDP still remain the diminished official oppositions and but Mr. Del Duca not only didn't win his seat, he didn't win back official party status. So where did the liberals go from here? Where did the NDP go from here? And what went right for Doug Ford? And what does all this say about what it means to be a conservative and winning in Canada. The Scrum is here to answer all that. Joyce Napier, the CTV Ottawa Bureau Chief, is here. Stephanie Levitz is a political reporter with the Toronto Star. And our special guest is the guy that probably hasn't slept since the campaign, Doug Ford's campaign manager, Corey Tonight. Uh, good to see everyone here. Corey, uh, you've been through losing elections, winning elections. This is a big, uh, big win. Uh, pull back the curtain. How did Doug Ford, two years ago, everyone thought this guy's in serious trouble. Two years later, it looked inevitable. What, went, what was the plan to get this right? Well, really, really it centers around uh, the Premier himself. Like, this is very much Doug Ford's victory. Uh, and I say that for, for a number of reasons. You know, it, it, these, these races often come down to the choice that the voters make around leadership. And, uh, and, and then looking at Doug Ford and the other uh, uh, options available, uh, he clearly won uh, won that debate, won that discussion. Uh, you know, I think he ran a, a very disciplined campaign with a very clear message for voters and uh, delivered it consistently day after day. What was the ballot box question? Like, what did this election turn on? Well, like all, all of these things, I think it ultimately comes down, who do you want to have in charge for, for the coming four years? Uh, you know, we had a five-point plan very much centered on building and the economy, uh, and plan for growth for the province, uh, which I think is really was fitting uh, where the public is at here in the province of Ontario right now. So I, I think it's all of that. And then tied in there is, I think, also uh, a big issue around housing uh, and affordability generally, uh, which uh, which I, I think uh, our plan was was the most credible in the, in the, in the eyes of enough voters to, to win a big majority suite. Very happy about that, Steph. Steph, what what do you what's your big takeaway here um, from the Ford win and how that worked, and what happened to the Liberals and the NDP? So a big takeaway is that no one, uh, Doug Ford certainly was not held accountable for the first two years of his mandate, nor some of the mistakes he made um, about the pandemic management. This was not a referendum election on the pandemic. And that's fascinating if you think about the number of deaths in Ontario, the number of businesses destroyed in Ontario. And what Doug Ford managed to do was give everybody a look forward. He was all about moving forward. And I think as many people wanted put the pandemic in their rearview mirror, this idea to borrow his slogan, you know, of getting it done, of just moving on, that resonated and people were much more willing to look forward than look back. And that leads to some questions, I think, you know, on the federal level about pandemic accountability. But for the Liberals and New Democrats in Ontario, it also raises the question of the future of the Liberals and New Democrats in Ontario. They split the vote in half, if you look at it, the popular vote. And so what does that mean? I mean, what it means is, is there a future for one of them to jump ahead of the other? Or is this a time to wonder why are there two parties on the left anymore? And what does the future look like for left wing and more progressive politics in Ontario? Joyce, what's your big takeaway? Well, I think it's the victory of pragmatic uh, politics. Uh, this man is a pragmatist. He's not an ideologue. He can make nice with opponents, re the federal government. Uh, he can, you know, play well with others. And you know what? He, he's he's the, the guy you'd go for a beer with, but he also showed compassion when he made mistakes. And I agree with Stephanie, he made mistakes during uh, the pandemic, but which politician hasn't made mistakes during this pandemic? He actually apologized. He went to the mic and he said, okay, yeah, I messed up. So, you know, he, he the, the get it done is, you, you can't get more pragmatic than that. And, you know, I think people believed it. Uh, it look, it's the lowest turnout in, in, in Ontario history. And, uh, and yet he managed to get his vote out. It, 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 people did not want change. They did not, Ontarians did not go to the poll because they wanted change. 43% turnout, 58% in uh, 2018. Corey, uh, let me go back to you. In his victory speech, uh, Doug Ford said he's got a new coalition. There's a real realignment. Uh, it was eight or nine private sector unions uh, supported 
Doug Ford, not the public sector, but the private sector unions. That's fundamental, representing what, about almost 500,000 workers. Uh, what is this new coalition he's talking about, and why should, how does this matter for federal conservatives who are engaged in their own leadership race right now? Yeah, well, uh, I'll, I'll take, take those on separately. Uh, for, first, I think one of the big stories uh, around that uh, changed, uh, reimagined conservative coalition here in Ontario uh, is, uh, is about private sector union support. Uh, the other part of his coalition that's very different is, is really unique to him as an individual. The reputation and brand and, and support base that the Ford family's had in parts of Toronto really went with them, which is why we won seats like uh, York Southwestern. Uh, that's very much uh, a seat that uh, municipally voted overwhelmingly uh, for the Fords uh, in Toronto mayoral races. And, uh, and with Michael Ford running there, uh, voted for us for the first time in like 60 years. So uh, it, it's those two things. Uh, what does it mean for the federal conservatives? Well, you know, I think it's just the same thing that's always the case. It's very hard to form a national government without significant support in the province of Ontario. And to date, you know, this has been the struggle since uh, since Stephen Harper is to, to find uh, a message that appeals uh, broadly enough to do that. If you're involved in the conservative leadership campaign uh, this weekend, they're rolling out their big numbers, 150,000 plus. Uh, this is going to be the big membership drive. What's the message they learned from Project Ontario, which, as Corey said, has been the big prize all along? Well, what's interesting is that to what extent are voters going with the Progressive Conservative Party in Ontario, or to what extent are they aligning behind Doug Ford? I mean, Corey said off the top, right, this was Doug Ford's victory. This is about people showing support for Doug Ford. In some ways, if you look at, for example, the budget that Doug Ford unveiled right before the election, he was offering to spend more than the Liberals, you know? So it's a question is, what does it mean to be a Conservative today, and what does that mean in Ontario? Federal Conservatives will say, look, Aaron O'Toole tried to moderate. Aaron O'Toole tried to be the more sort of Progressive Conservative of akin perhaps more to Doug Ford. It didn't work for him. We need to, we can only win power if we're less like the Liberals, not more like the Liberals. But if you're going to look at what happened in Ontario, perhaps that is not actually the case. Perhaps you do need to find a way to speak to voters who would obviously vote liberal because the same folks who are supporting Doug Ford in Ontario are voting liberal right. federally or they're voting New Democrat federally. You need those same voters. All right. I got to leave it there.